Assalamu alaikum, I'm Professor Dr. Hydra Jawad Mubarak. This is a practical session to a neuroanatomy of the brain stem. The brain stem is made of uh, the midbrain, bone, and medulla oblongata from above downward. These three parts of midbrain of brain stem uh, are in continuity below with the spinal cord. This figure shows that the medulla oblongata continue below, below with the spinal cord and the transitional zone between the medulla oblongata and the spinal cord uh, is the region that is uh, demarcated by the upper limit or the upper border of the atlas vertebra which is the first cervical vertebra because in a gross examination you will not be able to see a feature that demarcates the transitional zone from the spinal cord to medulla oblongata and you have to depend on the upper border of the first cervical vertebra which is atlas vertebra for this limit between the medulla and the spinal cord while superiorly the midbrain is continuous with the uh, cerebrum and specifically it is the midbrain continuous above with the diencephalon which is from the thalamus and subthalamus and other uh, parts of the diencephalon. This sagittal section shows you that uh, the cavity of the thalamus and diencephalon uh, and thalamus and hypothalamus, which is the third ventricle, as <coughs> it is the thalamus, <coughs> sorry, this is the hypothalamus, the cavity of the uh, diencephalon, which is the third uh, ventricle, continues with the cavity of the cerebral aqueduct of salivius, which is uh, a duct inside the midbrain. You can see that this duct of midbrain divides the midbrain into a posterior region, which is called tectum, and the anterior region, which is called tegmentum. This cerebral aqueduct of salivius of midbrain continues inferiorly with the cavity of the fourth ventricle that is limited behind by the cerebellum, while it is limited anteriorly by the pawn and upper medulla and we are saying that the fourth ventricle is limited anteriorly by the pawn and upper medulla <coughs> because the lower medulla contains central canal uh, that is in continuity with the central canal of the spinal cord that's why the lower medulla is called the closed medulla while the upper medulla is called open medulla because it is related posteriorly to the fourth ventricle a uh, gross examination of morphology of the brain stem uh, could be described when viewing the parts of the brain stem, the medulla, the pon, and midbrain from anterior uh, aspect and then from posterior aspect. Looking to the medulla from anterior aspect, we can see anteriorly in the midline there is an anterior median fissure. This anterior median fissure of the medulla oblongata continues uh, below with the anterior median fissure of the spinal cord. The anterior median fissure of the medulla oblongata shows on the side of it two prominences that are called uh, pyramids of the medulla. The pyramids of the medulla are formed by descending fiber from the cortex to the spinal cord which are the motor corticospinal tract. We can see that the anterior median fissure and the uh, lower medulla, which is the closed medulla containing central canal. Here, the anterior median fissure is obliterated by decusation of the pyramid, which is representing the uh, fibers, corticospinal fibers of the pyramid that cross from one side to the opposite side, thus making the anterior median fissure and the lower part of the closed medulla shallower or uh, shallow in comparison to the anterior median fissure of the upper open medulla uh, between the right and left pyramids. The pyramids are limited laterally by the anterior lateral sulcus, here and there. The anterior lateral sulcus contain rootlets of the hypoglossal nerve, which are uh, rootlets of the 12th cranial nerve. The rootlets of the hypoglossal nerve are in continuity with the rootlets of the ventral motor uh, root of spinal cord in the same line uh, of the ventral motor root of the spinal cord. More posterior to the anterior lateral sulcus, the upper 
open medulla show oval structures on the right and left side that are called the olive. These swellings or oval structures are produced by a ganglia or a nucleus inside the medulla which is called inferior olivary nucleus. More posterior to the olive there is a sulcus which is called posterior lateral sulcus. Therefore we can say that the olive uh, is an oval swelling in the upper part open medulla between anterior lateral sulcus and posterior lateral sulcus. As we said, the anterior lateral sulcus shows rootlets of hypoglossal nerve, while the posterior lateral sulcus shows rootlets <coughs> of the uh, ninocranial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, tenth cranial nerve, which is the vagus nerve, and the eleventh cranial nerve, which is the accessory cranial nerve. And we can see that these rootlets of the 9, 10, and 11 cranial nerve are con in continuity downward with the rootlets of the posterior sensory roots of the spinal cord. We cannot see what is more posterior to the posterior lateral sulcus in this view, but uh, we can see it in the back of the uh, brainstem soon. But uh, behind the posterior lateral sulcus is a region that is called tuberculum cinereum. This region is produced by the trigeminal nucleus of, uh, uh, of the, by the nucleus of a trigeminal nerve and uh, the fibers of the trigeminal nerve uh, covering it. We will see the region more posterior to the posterior lateral, lateral sulcus, which is the tuberculum cinereum that is uh, formed by uh, the trigeminal nucleus, the nucleus of trigeminal nerve. <coughs> the junction of the medulla above with the pole shows the projection of three cranial nerves which are the abducent nerve, the sixth cranial nerve, the facial nerve which is the uh, seventh cranial nerve and the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve which is the eighth cranial nerve. We can see that the abducent nerve that is uh, projecting from this line of junction of medulla and pawn opposite to the pyramid while the seventh, the facial nerve, and the eighth, the vestibular cochlear nerve, projecting from the line of junction of medulla and pawn opposite to the olive. The anterior aspect of the pawn shows the convex anterior surface of body of pawn. This convex body of pawn shows transverse striation, which is formed uh, from inside by the pontocerebellar fibers. The anterior vertical midline of the body of pawn shows a groove for the basilar artery. We can see that the convex body of the pawn, which is inspected anteriorly or examined anteriorly, limited on the size by the projection of the trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth cranial nerve. And you can see that uh, this nerve projecting by a large sensory root and a small motor root. The region more lateral to the projection point of the trigeminal nerve is called the middle cerebellar peduncle because this region represents the connection between the pawn and the cerebellum. Actually, the three parts of the brainstem, the middle brain, the pawn, and the medulla, all of them are connected with the cerebellum by peduncles. Later on, we will see that the middle brain is connected uh, with the cerebellum by superior cerebellar peduncle. Uh, as we said, the pawn here is connected by the middle cerebellar peduncle to the cerebellum and we will see that even the medulla is connected with the cerebellum by inferior cerebellar peduncle. But here, from the anterior aspect, we can see that the region more lateral to the uh, origin of the trigeminal nerve representing the middle cerebellar peduncle, while the region medial to the uh, projection of the trigeminal nerve, this is the convex body of the point. The anterior aspect of the uh, middle brain showing the uh, cerebral peduncles, sometimes they are called basis peduncles or called the crura of middle brain, that are diverging from the bone upward and laterally. Uh, the cerebral peduncles form a posterior boundary of a diamond space or diamond region anterior to it this diamond region is called interpeduncular fossa because it lies 
uh, or it is limited posteriorly by the pedicles of the cerebral, cerebral pedicles. The diamond interpedicular fossa is limited anteriorly by the uh, optic chiasma and optic tract and posteriorly the diamond interpedicular fossa is limited by the cerebral pedicles. We can see that the diamond interpedicular fossa shows many structures which are from posterior to anterior. More posteriorly is the posterior perforated substance that is perforated by many vessels. Anterior to this, anterior posterior perforated substance are two uh, mammillary bodies, part of the hypothalamus. And more anterior is an elevation which is called tuber cinerium that is connected to the infundibulum of the pituitary gland. Don't mix this tuber cinerium that is connected to infundibulum of pituitary gland with a region more posterior to the posterior lateral sulcus of the medulla. This region, uh, which is called tuberculum cinerium, is produced by the trigeminal nucleus. This is not a tuberculum, this is a tuber cinerium connected to the infundibulum of uh, pituitary gland. We can see that the medial side of the cerebral pedicles shows a projection of the third cranial nerve, which is the oculomotor nerve. The fourth cranial nerve, which is the trochlear nerve, projecting from the back of midbrain, but it went on the lateral side of the cerebral pedicles. That's all about the anterior aspect of the brain stem. This is a photo for or a figure for the real uh, brain stem. This is the anterior median fissure. On the side of it are the pyramids. And uh, this is the ollie limited by the anterior lateral sulcus and posterior lateral sulcus. More posterior to the posterior lateral sulcus, this is the tuberculum cinerium region uh, that is produced by uh, the trigeminal nucleus and trigeminal nerve or tract deep to it. We will see that in section. You can see uh, here that uh, in the posterior lateral sulcus, we can see the nine and ten cranial nerve, the eleven cranial nerve is not seen. The hypoglossal rootlets in the anterior lateral sulcus are not seen. Even the uh, abducent nerve and uh, the six cranial nerve and seven and eight cranial nerves are seen here. Th these are the seven cranial nerve between uh, uh, projecting from the line of junction of the olive and bone. Uh, the seventh and the cranial nerve, but the abducent is not seen here between the pyramid and pon and the line of junction of pyramid and pon. This is the convex body of the pon shown in the midline, the group for the basilar artery, and you can see transverse striation of the convex body of pon, which is produced by the pontus cerebellar fiber. The body of pon is limited by the twelfth, uh, by the fifth cranial nerve, more lateral to the fifth cranial nerve. This is the region of the middle cerebellar pedicle. These are the cerebral pedicle, or called the crura of midbrain. From the medial side of the cerebral pedicle, this is the oculomotor nerve. Now we will describe the posterior aspect of the brainstem. Also, I will start describing the posterior aspect of the brainstem from below upward. In the midline, uh, the posterior aspect of the brainstem shows a posterior median sulcus. This posterior median sulcus also is in continuity with the posterior median sulcus of the uh, spinal cord. And uh, in between the, anterior, the posterior median sulcus and the posterior lateral sulcus uh, are uh, two <coughs> a tract which are fasciculus uh, gracilus on the sides of the posterior, uh, posterior median sulcus, fasciculus gracilus, right and left, and more laterally is the fasciculus cunatus. These fascicular uh, gracilus and fasciculus cunatus are in continuity with similar fasciculi seen in the spinal cord. So the region between the posterior median sulcus and the posterior lateral sulcus shows fasciculus gracilus and the cunatus Fasciculus gracilus is on the side of the posterior median sulcus, while uh, more lateral to the fasciculus gracilus is fasciculus cunatus. The upper end of the fasciculus 
cunetus and fasciculus gracilis is a swollen structure which is called tubercle gracilis and tubercle cunetus. Of course, up to the tubercle uh, gracilis and tubercle cunetus, this is the upper limit of the closed lower medulla that contain a central canal. And more lateral to the fasciculus cunetus, this region, <coughs> this is fasciculus cunetus and the uh, anterior or lateral to the fasciculus cunetus, this is the tuberculum cinerium that is produced by the uh, trigeminal nucleus and trigeminal tract. So the fasciculus cunetus, fasciculus gracilis, tuberculum cinerium, up to the tubercles, to the gracile tubercle and the cunet tubercle, uh, is, forming, is formed the features of the back of the closed lower medulla that contains central canal. If you go above to the closed lower medulla, we can see a diamond space that is representing the floor of the fourth ventricle, which is called rhomboid fossa. This diamond rhomboid fossa is formed by a lower triangle, which is the back of the open medulla, and an upper triangle, which is the back of the pawn. Both triangles, the back of the pawn, superiorly, and the back of the upper medulla, inferiorly, shows in the midline, posteriorly, a, a median sulcus. And on the sides of this median sulcus, a prominent tissue, which is called median eminence. So in the midline is a median sulcus, on, on the sides of it is the median eminence, which is an elevation of nervous tissue. The median eminence is limited laterally by a sulcus, which is called sulcus limitans, both in the upper uh, rhomboid fossa and lower rhomboid fossa. More lateral to the sulcus limitans, this is the vestibular region related to the vestibular nucleus of the vestibular cochlear nucleus of the aortic renal nerve deeply. And we will see that in the section. Uh, there are some features related to the uh, median eminence and the sulcus limitans. In the back of the pond, the upper triangle of rhomboid fossa, we can see uh, that there is a pit here uh, in the sulcus limitans that's called superior fovea. This is a superior fovea. And we can see that the median eminence below the superior fovea shows two spherical structures, the median eminence below the superior fovea, show two spherical structures that are called facial colloculi, because they are produced by the nucleus of facial nerve. So the uh, sulcus limitans shows a fossa about its middle uh, in the back of the pond. It shows a fossa which is called superior fovea, Below the superior fovea, the median eminence shows the swelling of the facial colloculi. And also, we will see that the region above the fossa, which is this region, above the fovea, this is the superior fovea, above the fovea, this region of the sulcus limitans appears grossly blue in color and is called locus cerealis. This region of the sulcus limitans that appear blue in color, which is called locus cerealis, is appearing blue because it contains a pigmented neurons of an area uh, which is called substantia ferrogenia. So neurons in the substantia ferrogenia that are tissue inside the pond uh, produce a surface a blue region in the upper part of the sulcus limitans. This upper blue region of the sulcus limitans is called locus cerealis. If we go inferiorly, we will find that also the sulcus limitans shows a fossa here, which is called inferior fovea. In the pawn, in the back of the pawn, we have superior fovea, and here we have inferior fovea. And from the inferior fovea, there is an oblique sulcus directed medially and downward to meet the median sulcus. This oblique sulcus 
extending downward and medially from the inferior fovea on the back of the pawn divides the median eminence on the back of, of on the back of the medulla this oblique sulcus dividing the uh, median eminence into two triangles the medial triangles are hypoglossal triangles that are related to the nucleus of the hypoglossal nerve which is the 12 cranial nerve while the lateral triangles are the vagal triangles that are formed by the vagal nucleus which is the nucleus of the 10th cranial nerve we can see that the region between the vagal triangle and the gracile tubercle, which is this region, is called area postrema. The upper triangle of the rhomboid fossa and the lower triangle of the rhomboid fossa, uh, the upper triangle is related to the back of the pawn, or representing the back of the pawn, the lower triangle representing the back of the upper medulla, are separated in the midline between the upper and lower triangle by transverse running fibers that are called tria medullaris. We can see that uh, the boundaries of the rhomboid force uh, from above uh, is formed by or is formed by the uh, uh, superior cerebellar pedicle. These uh, superior cerebellar pedicles are considered as connection between the midbrain and cerebellum and more lateral to the superior cerebellar pedicle forming the upper boundary of the rhomboid fossae. This is the middle cerebellar pedicle connecting the pawn with the uh, cerebellum and below the superior and inferior, uh, the superior and middle cerebellar pedicle. This is the inferior cerebellar pedicle connecting the medulla oblongata with the cerebellum. We can see that the superior cerebellar pedicles are connected by a lamina, which is called superior medullary villum. This superior medullary villum uh, belonging to uh, connection to, to the midbrain, and you can see that the forticranial nerve, which is the trochlear nerve, projecting from the superior medullary villum, and then it winds around the lateral sides of the core of midbrain. Regarding the back of the middle brain the back of the middle brain is called the tactum as we say uh, this is the third ventricle continues with the aqueduct of salivius and the middle brain and we can see that the aqueduct of salivius divides the middle brain into a posterior region which is the tactum and the anterior region which is the tegmentum and this tactum is seen here by four spherical structures that are called right and left superior colloculus right and left inferior colloculus so the two superior colloculi and the two inferior colloculi representing the tectum. You can see that the midbrain uh, is uh, uh, related above to the thalamus, which is uh, forming the walls of the third ventricle. And also here we can see that the colloculi, which is the back of the, which, uh, which are forming the back of the midbrain above, is related or are related to the thalami, and this is the cavity of the third ventricle. You can see that the cavity of the third ventricle is related posteriorly to this structure, which is the pineal gland. And here also, this is the pineal gland. You can see that the pineal is above the tectum, and these are the colloculi, which are the tectum, and this is in the midline, the pineal. This is the cavity of the third ventricle. Actually, the inferior colliculus is connected by inferior brachium to medial geniculate body and the superior colloculus is connected by a superior brachium to the lateral geniculate body. The superior colloculus, superior brachium, and lateral geniculate body are part of the uh, visual tract, visual pathway. The superior colloculus, lateral uh, superior brachium, and lateral geniculate body are parts of the visual pathway. While the inferior colliculus uh, and the inferior brachium and the medial geniculate body are parts of the auditory pathway. The lateral geniculate body and the medial geniculate body are lying on the sides of the thalamus and therefore the lateral and medial geniculate body sometimes are called the uh, metathalamus. This is all about the back of the uh, uh, brain stem.
and this is a well demonstrated uh, figure with many markings for the uh, back of the uh, brain stem. Here, this is the posterior lateral sulcus. On the sides of it are fasciculus gracilis, and more laterally uh, are the fasciculus cunatus. The fasciculus cunatus limited laterally by the posterior lateral sulcus, more lateral to the posterior lateral sulcus, or more anterior lateral to the posterior lateral sulcus, is the tubercular cinerium formed by the uh, trigeminal spinal tract and the nuclei of trigeminal nerve. We can see that the gracile tracts ending into the gracile tubercles and the cunate uh, tracts ending into the cunate uh, tubercles. Uh, we can see the back of pawn represented by the upper triangle of rhomboid fossa and back of open medulla representing by the lower triangle of the uh, open medulla uh, showing an anterior median sulcus. On the sides of it is the median eminence limited laterally by the sulcus limitans. Here this is the uh, superior fovea. Below the superior fovea this is the facial colloculus. The upper region above the superior fovea is blue and is called local uh, cereulus which is produced by the uh, pigmented neurons of substantia ferrogenia, the uh, lateral region, lateral to the sulcus limitans is the vestibular region. And we can see the stria medullaris separating the upper triangle of the pawn from the lower triangle of the pawn of the diamond rhomboid fossae. We can see that the sulcus limitans shows in the back of the open medulla an inferior fovea from which an oblique sulcus uh, descending downward immediately, dividing the median eminence into an upper triangle or a medial triangle, which is a hypoglossal triangle, and lateral triangle, which is the vagal triangle. The region between the vagal triangle and the gracil tubercles is called the area postrema. And you can see the superior cerebellar pedicles, which are connecting the midbrain with the cerebellum more lateral to it, this is the middle cerebellar pedicle connecting the pawn with the cerebellum. This is the superior cerebellar pedicle connecting the midbrain with the cerebellum. And this is the middle cerebellar pedicle connecting the pawn with the cerebellum. And below them is the inferior cerebellar pedicle connecting the medulla with the cerebellum. We can see the superior medullary villum, uh, which is the lamina between the superior cerebellar pedicle giving origin to the trochlear nerve, which is the fourth cranial nerve, that winds around the lateral side of the uh, cerebral pedicles. These are the four colloquy of the midbrain, the pineal gland, cavity of the fourth ventricle, and thalamus. This is all about uh, gross morphology of the uh, brain stem from the front and from the behind. This is a figure for uh, a real uh, brain showing the rhomboid fossa. This is the stria terminalis, uh, stria medullaris. This is the stria medullaris, which is this one between the upper triangle and lower triangle. So this is the back of the pawn. This is the facial colloculus, median sulcus. This is the vestibular region lateral to the sulcus limitans. Here we have hypoglossal triangle, vagal triangle. This is the gracile tubercle and the cuneate tubercle. Uh, this is the superior cerebellar pedicle, more laterally. This is the middle cerebellar pedicle, and this is the inferior cerebellar pedicle. These are the four colloquy: inferior colloculus, inferior brachium, and the uh, medial geniculate body, and this is the superior colloquy. After completing the topographic gross anatomy of the brainstem, now we must describe the cross-sectional anatomy of the brainstem that is uh, including cross-sections in the midbrain, cross-section in the pawn, and the cross-section in the medulla oblongata. Before passing into these sections, uh, we must know that the brain uh, stem sections in the midbrain sections, pawn and medulla, will show the nuclei of the cranial nerves. These nuclei are located in the brain stem and they are uh, the nuclei that are forming the cranial nerves. And therefore, uh, sections 
And the open medulla and the closed medulla, you know, the open upper medulla is related to the fourth ventricle, and the lower closed medulla is containing central canal. Uh, the section of the open and the closed medulla that will be examined soon must show the hypoglossal nucleus of the 12th cranial nerve, and also must show the nucleus ambigus that is uh, responsible for motor nerve supply to muscles of the pharynx and larynx. These muscles are supplied by the synuclears via the 9, 10, and 11 cranial nerve. Also, the open and the closed medulla must show the nucleus, dorsal motor nucleus of vagus that provides parasympathetic uh, function to the vagus nerve. And the sections of the closed and open medulla must show the nucleus of a tractus solitarius that receives taste sensation from the mouth and tongue via the 7, 9, and 10 cranial nerve. The sections of the medulla open and the closed must also show the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal nerve and the upper part of the medulla which is the open medulla must show also the nuclear of the vestibular cochlear nerve that are lying at the junction of the pon and medulla so the medulla which is the first uh, part of the brain stem that we will study or describe the sections in it Usually, sections in the medulla are considered as a section in the lower medulla, which is ju just above the spinal cord. This is the first section. The section above, or the next section will be above the first section. The first section is in the lower medulla, above the spinal cord. The second section is in the closed medulla, below the olive, below the open medulla. And the third section, which is the highest section, is a section at the olive which is a section in the open medulla that posteriorly pass into the uh, floor of the rhomboid fossa of the fourth ventricle. So I will start describing sections in the lower medulla, which is just above the spinal cord. Of course, because this section is above the spinal cord, we must revise the anatomy of the spinal cord in a cross section. The spinal cord shows a central gray matter, which is edge-shaped, this gray matter is formed of nerve cells. Uh, the, edge, the limbs of the edge is formed by ventral motor root, and those are sensory root connected by gray commissure, and the gray commissure contain a central canal. And around this edge-shaped gray matter of the spinal cord is a white matter, uh, which is formed by myelinated axons uh, of uh, fibers either ascending to the brain or descending from the brain. So. The first section of the medulla oblongata, which is the lower section, uh, just above the spinal cord, simulate in some way section of the spinal cord, as following. First, this is the central canal. We have a central canal in the, spinal, in the medulla oblongata, just like that in the spinal cord, and around the central canal is a gray matter. But here, the ventral gray horn is separated from the central gray matter by the decussation of the pyramid. These are the pyramid, and this is the anterior median fissure in between the pyramid. And at that level, you can see that the anterior median fissure is shallow because some corticospinal motor fibers of the pyramid cross to the opposite side, and this decussation of the pyramid, the crossing of fiber, make the anterior median fissure shallow in between the pyramids. So here you can see that the decussation of the pyramid uh, separate the ventral gray horn of the gray matter from the central gray matter. Also, the, instead of the dorsal gray horn uh, of uh, the spinal cord here, the gray matter dorsal to the central gray matter is formed of two tongue-like projections. The medial one is the, cune uh, this, the gracile nucleus, and the lateral one is the cuneate cu nucleus. The gracile nucleus, the medial one, is covered, or, uh, is covered by the fasciculus gracilis, and the lateral one the cuneate nucleus is covered by the fasciculus cuneatus. Of course, nerve cells and the gracile uh, nucleus represent the end station of nerve fibers of the fasciculus gracilis. And similarly, the nerve cells of the cuneate nucleus represent the end station of nerve fibers in the fasciculus cuneatus. Just lateral to the fasciculus cuneatus and the nucleus cuneatus is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve, one of the cranial nerve nuclei that uh, was shown before a while in the table that must be examined in the sections of the medulla, the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve, which is this one. 
That's all about uh, the lower section in the medulla oblongata. Uh, we have to add that the white matter on the sides of the gray matter contain ascending and descending fibers similar to those in the spinal cord. And these fibers ascending and descending will be described later on with anatomy of the, the spinal cord. But here, the lateral white matter between the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and the ventral gray horn, this region of the white matter contains, in addition to nerve fibers, some cells that with the, fun, with the nerve fibers here form a plexus called reticular formation. The function of this reticular formation formed of nerve cells and nerve fiber is that it make us awake or asleep when it is activated the reticular formation when it is activated we will be awake and if it is not we will sleep now we will pass to a higher section which is section in the medulla above uh, the first section this is the first section and below the olive of course this is the first section in order to be connected with the next section the second section here also, this is a section in the closed medulla, so we have a central canal, and around it is a central gray matter, but we don't have a ventral gray horn. Also, the dorsal part of the gray matter, dorsal to the central gray matter, in the previous section was an appearance of tongue-like projections from the central gray matter, but here, the dorsal gray matter is separated completely from the central gray matter and forming a larger nucleus gracilis medially and cuneate nucleus laterally, while the fasciculus gracilis is less in comparison to the previous section and also the fasciculus cuneatus is less in comparison to previous section, simply because nerve fibers in the fasciculus gracilis ends here in the gracilis nucleus and nerve fibers of the cuneate uh, fasciculus and in the cuneate nucleus. Again, lateral to the fasciculus cuneatus and nucleus cuneatus is the spinal nucleus of uh, trigeminal nerve and its tract. Anteriorly, these are the pyramids and this is the anterior median fissure. We can see that the axons of cells in the gracile nucleus and the cuneate nucleus run forward in the white matter of the medulla, forming the so called internal arcuate fiber. These internal arcuate fiber, which are axons of the gracile nucleus and the cuneate nucleus, cross in the midline to form a bundle that is running longitudinally on uh, and anterior to the central gray matter. This bundle is called medial lemniscus. So we can see that uh, anterior to the central gray matter, there are bilateral medial lemniscus bundle of nerve formed by crossing of axons of the gracile nucleus and the cuneate nucleus. The midline region of the crossing is called the region of sensory decusation because the gracile and the cuneate nuclei are sensory nuclei and their fibers are sensory fibers and when these fibers cross the midline to form the medial lemniscus on the opposite side, the crossing region is called sensory decusation. In comparison to this, this is a motor decusation of the pyramidal fibers because the pyramidal fiber are a corticospinal motor fiber and sometimes we call this level as a section at the motor decusation while this level is a level at the sensory decusation. Again here the white matter on the sides contain tracts descending or ascending which are similar to tracts in the spinal cord and will be studied with the spinal cord. And also these lateral uh, white matter contain nuclei with some plexus of nerve fiber forming the reticular formation that wake us if it is activated or make us sleep or anesthetize if it is depressed. Regarding the cranial nerve nuclei that we had shown in the table, now in this section, the second section, we must see the hypoglossal nucleus of 12 cranial nerve, nucleus ambiguous, those are motor nucleus of vagus, nucleus of tractus solitarius, in addition to spinal trigeminal nucleus that we had just seen. So you can see that the hypoglossal nucleus is located in the central gray matter, anterior and lateral to the central canal. And those are lateral to the hypoglossal nucleus is the dosal motor nucleus of vagus. While the nucleus of tractus solitarius is also located in the central canal, dorsally on the side of the midline. Nucleus ambiguous is located in the white matter, 
just medial to the spinal nucleus of trigeminal of course here you can see many other nuclei but they are less important the most important are the nuclei that i had just described now we will pass to higher section which is the section at the oli or we can say it is a section at the open medulla because posteriorly this section passes through the lower triangle of the rhomboid fossae which is the floor of the fourth ventricle so you can see this is the cavity of the fourth ventricle and this is the median sulcus this is the uh, median eminence and this is the sulcus limitans and this is the vestibular region remember here that uh, we have an inferior fovea in the sulcus limitans and from it there is an oblique line dividing the median eminence into medially hypoglossal triangle and laterally vagal triangle and this is the pyramid and lateral to the pyramid is the olive which is produced by the underlying inferior olivary nucleus this is the anterior median fissure and this is the medial lemniscus which is formed in the previous section by the sensory decussation but here the medial lemniscus appearing larger in size as longitudinal bands on the side of the midline just dorsal to the pyramid so we must examine this section in uh, this figure which carries higher details you can see that this is the median uh, sulcus on the side of it is the hypoglossal nucleus more lateral to the hypoglossal nucleus is the dorsal motor nucleus of vagus of course these nuclei are in the median eminence this is the sulcus limitans and the lateral to the dorsal motor nucleus is the nucleus of tractus solitarius and more laterally this is the vestibular nuclei and more lateral to the vestibular nuclei is the cochlear nuclei lateral to the vestibular nuclei is the inferior cerebellar peduncle on that side and that side and medial to the inferior cerebellar peduncle is the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal nerve and its tract medial to the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal nerve is the nucleus ambigus again this is the inferior olivary nucleus of course the white matter is also containing ascending and descending tract uh, of the uh, fibers that are similar to that in the spinal cord and will be studied later on and you can see here this is the inferior olivary nuclei produce, produce the olive and this is the pyramid these are the pyramids with the inferior media fissure here of course there are uh, many other nuclei but these are the most important uh, nuclei that i have just described Also, we may say here that the lateral uh, part of the white matter appeared in section of the upper medulla, the level of the olive, concern uh, the network of the reticular formation. Now we will discuss cross section and the pawn, and the pawn usually is studied in two cross sections, lower pawn and upper pawn. Posteriorly, these two sections pass into the floor of the rhomboid fossa, which is of the fourth ventricle floor. You can see that the section on the lower pond is passing at the level of the facial colloculus. You know that the median eminence below the inferior fovea here in the back of the pond form a spherical structure, which is called facial colloculus. And the upper section is also in the passing into the uh, rhomboid fossa floor of the four ventricle above the facial colloculus we will start with section and the uh, pawn at the level of the facial colloculus which is section in the lower pawn the section in the pawn in the lower pawn at the level of the facial colloculus shows that uh, the pawn is formed of a ventral part which is this part and dorsal part the ventral part of the pond contains transverse running fiber, which are ponto cerebellar fibers that are collected laterally to form the middle cerebellar peduncle. And also the transverse pond, uh, the ventral pond shows a vertical running fiber, which are corticospinal and corticonuclear fibers. In addition to the transverse ponto cerebellar fiber and the vertical fiber, the ventral pond also contains spontaneous nuclei. The dorsal pawn uh, is limited laterally by the inferior cerebellar peduncles in the uh, lower uh, pawn 
and uh, dorsally it shows the floor of the fourth ventricle this is the cavity of the fourth ventricle and this is the floor of the uh, fourth ventricle the lomboid forces this is this is the median sulcus and this is the median eminence forming the facial colliculus and this is the sulcus limitans and lateral to the sulcus limitans is the vestibular region uh, you can see that uh, the facial colliculus is formed by the nucleus of the sixth cranial nerve, which is the abducent nucleus, with nerve fibers of the facial nerve, the seventh cranial nerve, winding around it. So, actually, the facial colliculus is formed by the nucleus of the sixth cranial nerve, the abducent nerve, with fibers of the seventh cranial nerve, which is uh, fibers of the facial uh, nerve, winding around the abducent nucleus. And you can see that lateral to the facial colliculus and to the abducens nucleus is the vestibular nucleus, and lateral to this is the cochlear nuclei and uh, on the sides of the inferior cerebellar pedicle. Also, you can see that medial to the inferior cerebellar pedicle is the spinal nucleus and the tract of trigeminal nerve. The dorsal bone shows also uh, just behind the uh, ventral part of the bone the medial lemniscae, which are uh, formed in the medulla at the level of the sensory decussation and here the medial lemniscus appearing less vertical uh, as they were in the uh, medulla in the medulla the medial lemniscus are vertical or longitudinal bands we have to say longitudinal bands on the side of the midline while in the pond the medial lemniscus are becoming more horizontal less uh, longitudinal and in between the medial lemniscus, which are on the sides of the midline, are a transverse running fiber, which are called the trapezoid body and trapezoid uh, nuclei or nerve cells that are related to the auditory pathway. Actually, the trapezoid body is formed by axons of the, of the cochlear nuclei that cross to the opposite side here are the trapezoid body. Of course, the uh, white matter contain ascending and descending tracts and other crossing tract and also contain a reticular formation uh, here you can see that uh, this is the inferior cerebellar pedicle forming the lateral boundary of the dorsal part of the section medial to it is the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal nerve and its tract and medial to the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal nerve is the nucleus of fascia nerve the fibers of the facial nerve the nucleus winds around the abducent nucleus to form the facial colliculus. Section in the upper bone also shows that the bone is formed of a ventral bone and dorsal bone. The ventral bone again is formed of transverse running uh, pontocerebellar fibers forming laterally the middle cerebellar pedicle and vertical fibers which are corticospinal and corticonuclear. In addition to that, the, ver the ventral bone contains pontine nuclei. And again, the dorsal bone is uh, limited laterally by the superior cerebellar pedicle. Of course, the lower section uh, shows that the dorsal bone is limited laterally by the inferior cerebellar pedicle. But in the upper section, the dorsal bone is limited laterally by the superior cerebellar, not the inferior cerebellar pedicle. And again, the uh, trigeminal nucleus is medial to the superior cerebellar pedicle. In the previous section of the lower bone, the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and its tract is medial to the inferior cerebellar pedicle. But here, the trigeminal nuclei is medial to the superior cerebellar pedicle. And here, the trigeminal nuclei are two nuclei. One of them is called motor nucleus of a trigeminal nerve, and the other is called the main sensory nucleus of a trigeminal nerve, not the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal nerve. This is the main sensory trigeminal nucleus, and this is the motor nucleus of a trigeminal. Here, it was the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal nerve and its tract. But here, in the upper bone, it is a motor nucleus of a trigeminal, and the main sensory nucleus of a trigeminal, both lying medial to the superior cerebellar pedicle. Again, the uh, dorsal bone on the sides of the midline uh, behind the ventral uh, part of the bone shows the medial lemniscus and it is horizontally lying, not longitudinal lying, and in between them is the trapezoid body 
which is related to auditory pathway. Also, the white matter contain reticular formation and other fibers uh, ascending up and down. You can see the dosal pond is here forming the floor of the rhomboid fossa. This is the median sulcus. This is the median eminence. And this is the cavity of the fourth ventricle limited laterally by the superior cerebellar pedicles. And this is the superior medullary villum forming the roof of the upper part of the rhomboid fossa or of the uh, fourth ventricle. Of course, we have many other structures, but they are, these are the main structures for the uh, sections of the pond. Try to remember the table. In that table, we say that uh, the lower pond contains the nucleus of the abducent nerve, the nucleus of the facial nerve, and the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, and the vestibular cochlear nuclei. But section in the upper pond shows the sensory nuclear, the motor nucleus of a trigeminal nerve, and the main uh, sensory nucleus of a trigeminal nerve, not the spinal, the main sensory nucleus of a trigeminal, not the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal, in addition to the motor nucleus of a trigeminal nerve also appearing in the level of the upper pond. And now we will discuss the, med the midbrain, sections of the midbrain. And here also we will see in lower section of midbrain the nucleus of the trochlear nerve, the fourth cranial nerve, while section in the upper midbrain we will see the nucleus of the oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve. Within it is the nucleus uh, that is called Edinger westphalian nucleus that is combined with the nucleus of the oculomotor nerve. And also we will see the mesencephalic nucleus of a trigeminal. The trigeminal nerve, therefore, has three types of nuclei, mesencephalic in the midbrain, mesencephalic trigeminal nucleus in the midbrain, main sensory nucleus in the upper pond adjacent to the motor nucleus of a trigeminal nerve, and the spinal nucleus of a trigeminal nerve that extend from the lower pond into the medulla and even in the upper parts of the spinal cord. So now we will discuss a section in the midbrain. Also, section in the midbrain will be at two levels, upper midbrain and lower midbrain. And here you can see this is the inferior colloculus, so this is the section in the lower midbrain. The Section in the midbrain is divided by horizontal imaginary line at the level of the aqueduct of salivius. This is the aqueduct of salivius. Midbrain tissue behind the aqueduct of salivius is the tectum, while uh, anterior to the level of the uh, aqueduct of salivius. The midbrain is divided into three regions, which are first the uh, cross cerebri, and behind it is the pigmented region, which is substantia nigra, and behind it is the tegmentum. Of course, the tectum contains the collocula. Here is the superior colloculus, and in the above, uh, in the section of the upper midbrain is the superior colloculus. And you can see that uh, fibers, uh, which are called lateral lemniscus, conveying. Uh, uh, auditory fibers to the inferior uh, colloculus, as you can see. Uh, the cross cerebri uh, containing many types of fibers that are named here. Substantia nigra is a pigmented layer behind the cross cerebri. It contains melanin pigment. And behind it, the pigmentum shows the medial lemniscus that is found in the sensory decusation and the medulla, but here also we have a trigeminal lemniscus related to the pathway of trigeminal nerve and the spinal uh, lemniscus also, and these will be discussed later on. The aqueduct of salivius is surrounded by a central gray matter, and the ventral part of the central gray matter at the lower midbrain shows the nucleus of the trochlear nerve, which is the fourth cranial nerve. And the mesencephalic nucleus of a trigeminal nerve is seen on the side of the central gray matter of the midbrain here. And the white matter also contains ascending and descending tracts, 
and also contain reticular formation. Section in the upper midbrain also shows a tactum, which is behind the uh, line passing through the cerebral aqueduct. The tactum here in the upper midbrain is formed by the superior colliculus. Other part ventral to the marginal line at the aqueduct of salivius is formed of crust cerebri, substantia nigra, and tegmentum. Uh, the uh, tegmentum uh, also shows the medial luminescus, but medial to the luminescus, a new large nucleus appear uh, behind the substantia nigra, which is called red nucleus. And the section of the lower midbrain behind the substantia nigra is only the medial luminescus and trigeminal luminescus and, and the spinal luminescus. But in section of the upper midbrain, medial to the medial luminescus, a big mass of a nucleus, which is called red nucleus, is now appearing. Also, the cerebral aqueduct is surrounded by central gray matter, and also the ventral part of the central gray matter contains the nucleus of the oculomotor nerve, which is the third cranial nerve. Within this mass of uh, oculomotor nerve is the edinger westphal nucleus. Again, the mesencephalic nuclei of the uh, trigeminal nerve appears on the side of the central gray matter. Again, the white matter contains ascending and descending tracts and reticular formation. Of course, these are the main features of the sections in the uh, parts of the uh, brainstem. More details will be known gradually with the topics, but these are the most important. Uh, thank you very much.